Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, everybody's getting in on the Justice Smollett drama coming out of Chicago. Today, Donald Trump, uh, who hated his own FBI and Justice Department uh, just a few weeks ago for investigating him, tweeted this today. FBI and DOJ to review outrageous Jesse Smollett case in Chicago it is an embarrassment to our nation. Really? An embarrassment to our nation. The very man who constantly lies left and right. He's calling somebody else an embarrassment to our nation. Gotcha. Also, folks, there's more to the Smollett story today uh, than, of course, uh, what Donald Trump is talking about. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel, this is what he had to say. He's, got, he, I mean, he's running his mouth left and right. Y'all check this out. Police are assembling the cost. Uh, they'll do that. And uh, then the Corporation Council of the City of Chicago will communicate to, uh, to Jesse Smollett and his legal team about recouping that cost uh, in that effort. And uh, given that he doesn't feel any sense of contrition and remorse, my recommendation is when he writes the check, in the memo section, he can put the word, I'm accountable. For the well, guess what, Smollett's defense clap back, quote, it is the mayor and the police chief who owe Jesse, owe him an apology for dragging an innocent man's character through the mud. Jesse has paid enough. Now, here's what's interesting. Rahm Emanuel wants this all over. First of all, have y'all noticed how talkative Rahm Emanuel is? When is the last time you actually heard this much from Rahm Emanuel on any other case in Chicago? How about this, Rahm? Let's hear you talk about Chicago, since we want to add up the cost. Let's talk about Chicago last year spending nearly $50 million to settle police abuse cases. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. Did I actually say that? Yes, he's crying about the cost involving the Justice Millet case. But again, last year, $50 million spent by the city of Chicago to settle police brutality cases. Or oh, I guess he forgot about that. Uh, now, I'm also going to pull up another number uh, that shows you the millions of dollars that have actually uh, been spent uh, as well in Chicago. Okay, again, $50 million last year. We're also talking about uh, over the course of a decade, check this out, between 2004 and 2016, police misconduct cases cost the city of Chicago. Y'all ready for this? Get yourself together. $662 million. <laughs> Let me repeat that. In a 12-year period, the city of Chicago spent $662 million settling police misconduct cases. I do not recall a single speech by Rahm Emanuel slamming police officers for costing the city, the citizens of Chicago, the taxpayers of Chicago, 662, matter of fact, 662 plus the 50, we now, folks, are at 700 plus million dollars. Please show me the video of Rahm Emanuel complaining about spending $700 million of taxpayer money because of rogue cops. Yeah, I thought so. Now, check this out, folks. The National District Attorneys Association, also known as NDAA, issued this rebuke of Cook County DA Kim Fox on how she and her office handled the case. Now, check this out. Quote, the case in Chicago illustrates a point that must be discussed in an effort to ensure fairness in our criminal justice system. The rich are treated differently. The politically connected receive favorable treatment. And Lady Justice sometimes peeks under her blindfold to see who stands before her. NDAA rejects these inequities as they are antithetical to our founding principles of justice that no one is above the law. Can y'all please tell me, first of all, have you ever heard of the National District Attorneys Association? Two, when is the last time you've ever heard them talk about police brutality? When is the last time you've ever had them issue a press release on DAs who do not prosecute cops for doing wrong? We just had the case in Pittsburgh. Cop went on trial, homicide, found not guilty. 
We had, of course, Stephon Clark in Sacramento. That case. I can go down the line, case after case. In fact, explain. Did, did y'all ever hear a statement from the National District Attorney Association condemning Anita Alvarez for improperly charging Dante Servin, the cop who jumped into a conversation, pulled his gun out, shot and killed Rakia Boy, in, shot her in the head, she dies, Anita Alvarez charges him wrongly, his case gets thrown out, the judge says, oh, this is the wrong charge. Dante Servin walked free. Please, y'all, take your time showing me where, where those district attorneys issued a press release condemning Anita Alvarez. I'll wait. Yeah, you can't find it. You can't. Now check this out. Now we got this idiot Illinois State Rep Michael McCullough who says he's introducing a bill to kill tax credits to productions that hire Justice Smollett. Now it's very interesting. Yesterday on social media, uh, my girl Lovey took uh, umbrage to me saying that white folks are treating Justice Smollett like he's OJ, like this is OJ 2.0. She said, Roland, that's unfair. Well, what do you now say, lovey? What do you now say to the rest of the people out there who say that I was wrong for comparing to OJ? The point I'm making is the white reaction to the Smollett case is also how white folks responded to OJ Simpson. Let's break all this stuff down with our pal, Dr. Greg Carr, Chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University, Long Victoria Burke, a writer with the NNPA, also Robert Patillo, civil rights attorney. Robert, I want to start with you. I, first of all, I ain't never heard of the National, <laughs> National District Attorneys Association. But for them to issue a statement condemning Kim Fox, when I don't recall them saying jack about other DAs and their wrongdoing, shows to me these white folks have lost their... Justice Smollett has literally caused white folks to lose their mind. Well, I, I think bigger than that, what the DA Association have to, has to be honest about is it's just a diversion program. All he did was the same diversion program that they offered Robert Kraft in Florida last week. Robert Kraft was offered the opportunity to have the charges against him for uh, soliciting prostitutes on multiple occasions dropped in exchange for doing community service and paying a fine. That's exactly what Jesse Smollett just did. He did community service at the Rainbow Post Coalition. He paid a fine. There's nothing outside of the ordinary about this. There's nothing that should be all this hyperbolic rhetoric, rhetoric all this discussion about Kim Fox everything else because people do not like the the nuts and bolts of the criminal justice system it is a class four felony which is a glorified misdemeanor to make a false police report. The same way the barbecue Becky and that all these other okay. people who make false reports against African Americans don't get charged with felonies, they realize that Justice Smollett was overcharged by giving him 16 felony counts for making a false police report, and they gave him a diversion program which is within the guidelines of protocol in Cook County. I went to law school in Chicago. I clerked to the, um, at the Cook County uh, Courthouse. They have bigger issues to handle there. They have vice lords. They have Latin kings. They have a lot bigger things to deal with than somebody making a false police report, and that's why they gave him a diversion program. Now, the Smollett people need to shut the hell up. You got your deal. Go home. Sit down. Quit re releasing press statements. Stop doing press conferences. Get in the car. Take your winnings and go home. But at the same time, Rahm Emanuel, the police superintendent, all these people criticizing the diversion program need to just understand that this is par for the course of what you get for a class four felony slash glorified misdemeanor. Uh, Greg, I want to go to you again. The issue that I have here is you see this, these district attorneys who said nothing. In fact, I believe we reached out to them to get them on the show. Uh, and of course, they chicken out uh, my, my understanding and they would not come on the show. That shows me how weak they are. But, but Greg, to sit here and listen to Rahm Emanuel at that news conference two days ago, yesterday on Good Morning America, the whining today, $712 million spent over the last 14 years, and he is bitching and moaning about what the Justice Smollett uh, case cost the city of Chicago? Sit your ass down, Rahm Emanuel. I think that's probably all that needs to be said, Roland. I mean, our blood pressure goes up when we listen to these white supremacists, but uh, Rahm Emanuel is ostensibly a Democrat. Donald Trump is ostensibly a Republican. 
and yet somehow they both seem to be on the same side of this Jesse Smollett issue because race trumps all those artificial political categories. The Chicago Police Union, this made up group of DAs. Let's be clear, as Robert said, I mean, alternative dispute resolution is, is a normal thing. They're angry because Jesse Smollett got treated, in their mind, like a white man. Like Robert Kraft. And like Robert Kraft, who was caught at the place. So let's be very clear about this. This isn't an issue of fact in Robert Kraft's case, but this billionaire gets the walk. So for Jesse Smollett to avail himself of the same thing that white people do every day, they're going crazy, and they should go crazy, because guess what? This is why you register to vote. This is why you go out and vote. What you going to do to Kim Fox? Put her back in office. Stuff it down their throat. Finally, in terms of our sister Lovey, this is why we have to have journalists like you and a free black press, independent black press, do this analysis, because folks sitting around there on social media who don't understand the long arm and the warp and woof of this do not remember that when O.J. Simpson, guilty or not guilty, got treated like a rich white man who could pay for a defense and go into a court of law and have a fighting chance at something, uh, white people also lost their minds. So not only is your comparison apt and fit, anyone with a historical memory would not have disagreed with it. And, and, and Lauren, again, I, I'm looking at all these conservatives acting a fool on social media. I mean, you had uh, that wimp Charlie Kirk imploring Donald Trump uh, to bring in the FBI. I mean, you have Donald Trump now on social media saying the FBI, they're going to investigate what happened here. I'm looking at Rahm Emanuel. I'm looking at all these people. And I'm sitting there going, y'all are spending this much time on this when I do not recall I do not recall ever seeing Rahm Emanuel go before the cameras on Good Morning America on a CBS morning show on news conference in Chicago and looking in the camera and saying all of you rogue damn cops with the Chicago police y'all are costing taxpayers money because of your actions and you talk and again I'm not let me be real clear Lauren, before I let you speak, I'm not making excuses for Jesse Smollett, okay? The DA says she believes Jesse Smollett lied. They believe Smollett is guilty. Now, first of all, they keep saying, well, he was exonerated. He, I, I don't know what's going on. But the bottom line is, see, I'm talking about the reaction. I'm talking about how all of a sudden, out of all of these cases we see come out of Chicago, that Jesse Smollett is now the the poster child for what's wrong with the criminal justice system and of course the irony of course is that the president who's complaining about this just got off so we think we haven't seen the full Mueller report but he just got off on on what is effectively treason um, I think part of you know what Robert said about Smollett's people need to shut up th that's right I mean they really, really need to shut up because the more they talk, the more they sort of drive the narrative. But of course, what's going on with Donald Trump is what always goes on with Donald Trump. He cannot stand watching someone African American making a decision and being in power. And so Kim Fox making that decision and being in power drives him crazy and he's trying to undo it. It's kind of sim similar to what we saw with Marilyn Mosby in, in Baltimore and Stephanie Morales in, in Portsmouth. She had prosecuted a, a cop. It's like when you see African Americans in power making decisions, there's a certain constituency out there that cannot handle it. Compounding that is the fact that the police chief, you know, and, and now of course the mayor is joining him, got out there and ran his mouth with that big time narrative about how Jesse Smollett embarrassed the city, which, by the way, nobody was really thinking about that. He just happened to sort of, I think, be in Chicago. But he made that huge narrative, and now you got to walk it back because you, you look ridiculous prosecuting somebody for something, though very stupid, that should have never happened and was just dumb, uh, beyond dumb, is not exactly, you know, as Robert pointed out, the most serious thing happening in the city of Chicago. Well, and I have to agree with Robert uh, on this one here. Jesse's, Jesse and your team, shut up. <laughs> right, shut up. I mean, they just shut keep up. talking. They can't. I mean, it's like they all can. this, no, they owe us an apology. <laughs> <laughs> they can't. They can't, they can't roll them because what we're faced I'm with is celebrity culture now. We're faced with a culture that was never a culture to begin with, but in this moment, there is no consensus, there is no commonality. All there is is platform and brand. 
and Jesse, right. uh, you know, Jesse Smollett is fighting for his brand right. at this point. Right, they're branding. But, but the, the, on that issue of him fighting for his brand at this moment, the worst thing that he can do is keep making statements. Yeah. Because what, what right. will end up happening is those Nigerian brothers right. will sit down with Oprah. Right. Or, <laughs> I, I, I mean, for real. Good those, going. If those Nigerian brothers sit down with Oprah and well, break down on, things first. and bring out text well, messages hold, hold, hold and emails, second, hold on. Right, it's hold on. over. Right, right. Oh. Well, that's why I tried to hold seal on. everything. I, 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 Hold on, I, I keep getting criticized. People are like, don't refer to them as the Nigerian brothers, the Americans. Okay, the the American Nigerian brothers. <laughs> I'm not going to try to pronounce their names. Oh, ho, ho. all right, Rob. No, Rob. but it's just, Look, I, I, I just, I, I just, I will tell again, you I, I am just, it, I, I just think, I just think, again, though, bottom line is this here. Now, here's the other piece, though. And this is why I would also tell justice people to chill out. The FBI is still investigating right. that right. letter that was sent to Jesse. Right. Now, here's the problem here, okay? According to the police, they found similar lettering or the magazine or the cutouts in the brother's apartment. Now, I don't know what, what's going on there. All I'm simply saying is, until that is dismissed or is gone, I'm like, look, you're not going to be prosecuted. It's, it's been expunged. The whole deal is sealed. I'm saying, go back to work. Go make music. No need to sit here and keep fanning the flames because what it does is it keeps people talking about this as opposed to moving on. So you want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible.